You know there's a way for nurses to start a business, but there's so many moving pieces. Cut to the crap. It's time to go right to the source and get real about what's working in business and marketing for nurses with your host, the founder of Nursepreneurs, Katie Harris. Hi, it's Katie, and it's another episode of the Nursepreneur Podcast. And today on the podcast, I have Georgia Skyers, who is a master's prepared nurse executive with 23 years of experience. Uh, and she started the 360 degree nurse. So I'm so excited, Georgia, to have you here today. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Katie. Sure. So give us some background of your nursing career. How did you, what, what, what kind of, I'm always interested in what formed your business. And I think a lot of that is your nursing career and where, how it led up to where you are now. Yes. So I, fortunately, Katie, I got into nursing at the age of 17. Um, the high school that I attended, uh, Clara Barton High School in Brooklyn, um, had an LPN program. And so I started that program and there began my nursing career. Um, spent the next few years doing various things from bedside nursing, both in long-term care and in acute care. And then I transitioned over into management and administration, um, working as either a nurse manager, um, director of nursing, assistant director of nursing. Um, I even taught. I taught at the um, university level for a little while. I absolutely love that. I uh, realized that I do like to teach people how to do things. Um, and, but most of my years, I, I would say, was spent in leadership. And so there I learned the do's and don'ts of leadership. <laughs> and there it became very clear to me that a lot of what is wrong or what is creating all this burnout in nursing and in nursing leadership actually could be alleviated um, by leadership development. And so that's how 360 degree nursing was born. I felt like uh, we're great nurses and we do know how to nurse. We do know how to nurse and we do know what to do for patients and our units, but we're not very good at taking care of the self or the business. So that's the 360. We, we need to look at it all the way around. We need to look at all aspects and not just, I'm a nurse and so I need to take care of the patient. Once, once you fall into a leadership position, it's now more than the patient. Um, and so that's, that's where that, that came from. How do I get nursing leaders to understand that this is not just about my floor that I'm managing and all the outcomes that that I need to produce on that floor. Yeah, you know, we've actually had this conversation. Um, my hospital system had contacted our university to talk about uh, developing a curriculum for the nurse managers. And mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was just so, um, you know, I was so excited for that to happen because for years, or for as long as I've been a nurse, and it's been 20 years, it, the type of people that go into the nurse manager, it's like you were a good mm -hmm. nurse we're going to make you the manager, but we're not going to give you any skill sets or training. And, and, you know, hopefully you're a good manager type of thing. And exactly that kind of like, let me show you how to be a leader. Uh, exactly. You've found that in your. Absolutely. It happened to me each time, each different um, leadership role that I stepped into. It was, you do this so well. Um, I'd like to promote you to that. Or, another nurse leader that I may run into. Hey, uh, they're asking me to be the, the, lead, the manager of the unit. But then when you ask, um, what type of training or what type of development have you received? It's usually little or sometimes none. So you get nurses falling into leadership roles, scrambling, scrambling to satisfy that leadership component. And again, they're great at the patient care piece but it's all the other pieces that involve being a, a leader. Yeah, and you know, I've, I found too that a lot of the nurses will take it really personally if they don't do well, and I, I don't think it's the fault of the nurse. It's the fault of the top management for not grooming that nurse because leaders are, are 
groomed. They're not, you know, we <laughs> associate leaders as being always oh, a born leader and, you know, he's just natural and intuitive and knows what to do, but that, that's just a myth. <laughs> so here's what we are, Katie. We're great nurses. We're not great um, business owners. And so as I traveled through my leadership journey, it became very clear to me that whatever department I'm over, that's my business. That's my Google. That's my, that's my Amazon. That's my Apple. And so what would I have to do as a leader to create the outcomes that, that Google gets, that Apple gets, you know? And so I realized that that I didn't learn that. And so I had to seek that development on my own where prudent corporations invest and take their leaders through that. How can I get you to be the best leader? You can be the best business owner. You can be to help us get our organization to where we need it. And I find that to be a, a great disadvantage because nurse leaders, if you look at it, hold the largest keys in any healthcare entity, whether you're talking about nursing homes, hospitals, outpatient, wherever you go, the largest department is typically the nursing department. And why are those leaders so ill-prepared when the stakes are so high? That's a that's an excellent point. That is such a good question. <laughs> so I'm glad you're leading this way. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what did you find that the kind of the outcomes that, uh, whether it's it, outcomes that you would typically go in and say, all right, I'm in a new unit or I'm in a new position. There's these kind of standard outcomes that I want to achieve, or is there some kind of cohesiveness that you're looking at? Um, the standard outcomes for us uh, nursing leaders are typically uh, the quality, um, all things surrounding quality. There's usually a uh, financial margins that you have to meet. And of course, today, there's the huge customer satisfaction push. So three things, customer satisfaction, quality metrics, financial metrics, huge in healthcare, led by who? Nursing leaders. So as and, I- Yeah, those are huge categories too that you could go about <laughs> in many different ways. <laughs> exactly. And so here you have one leader doing it this way, one nurse leader doing it that way. Some are scrambling and, and we read and hear and see all the burnout that's occurring in nursing at large. But I don't think a lot of focus is being placed on the nurse leaders themselves who are putting in, believe it or not, 65, 70 hours just to make sure that they're meeting these metrics. And so why do they do that? Because the stakes are high. Now, if they were prepared, they wouldn't have to put in 65, 70 hours a week to get it done because they would know what to do, know what to look for. They know how to run a business and not be a nurse. They'd, they'd work on the business and not in the business. And so that's why they're burning out at the rate that they are. They're, they're busy bees working <laughs> in that unit and they yeah. need to work on the unit. So those are the principles that 360 um, teach nursing leaders how to do and, and, and follow to keep them in this game. Yeah, that, that's something that I've, I've learned because, um, and especially when I started going into a business, because I was always so busy on the unit. I was always busy, busy, mm -hmm. busy but I wasn't actually getting anything accomplished. Correct. <laughs> and, you know, when I kind of look back on my career, I'm like, well, I put out a lot of fires, but I don't have anything Correct. to support. it. <laughs> and that's it. We, we've become um, expensive firefighters not utilizing the 80-20 rule. You know, you, you spend the time on what matters and then you learn to delegate and you learn to assign things to others and, and all that. So again, I, I think, you know, based on my observation, it's that lack of business development skill that nurse leaders um, are struggling with. And so I say, here I am. I'm here to tell you guys how to do this using a systematic approach, giving you guidelines on how to, where to spend your time so that you get the biggest bang for your buck. And you can go home and be with your families afterwards. That's a nice thought. <laughs> yes. it, it also makes the nurse mad, because like, to me, the nurse manager role is like that role that I'm like, 
oh my god no way <laughs> there is Correct. no way to do that role because it's Correct. you get it from all angles and unless you are innately equipped to deal with it it's just a, a setup for failure in a lot of ways correct and and so one of the biggest things they tell you at the um beginning of that role don't forget you have 24-hour accountability for that unit you are the manager now somehow i feel like nurses walk away with that thinking i have to be there 24 hours because that is certainly how we behave but that again is because we have not built an infrastructure with the rest of our teams because we don't know how to build businesses and so that that costs us our time mm -hmm. and so i i feel like you know once we show nurses how to become business owners, we'll see a huge shift in how they feel and, and what they produce. Absolutely. And especially because nurses are so dedicated to what they do. They really take on that. Right? And I mean, it, that's both the problem and the solution in a lot of ways, because <laughs> um, they are so, they want to be there 24 hours. They want to make sure everything gets done and they feel like they have to do everything themselves. And I think the power of a real leader comes from the success of the people around you, not so much your own success. Exactly. And so a, a great part of that then is building that team, um, finding people in your team who are your next set of leaders to help you grow. Because again, you said it, nurses, we, we want to make sure that things are done well. If your name is assigned to it, you want to make sure that the outcomes are great. But a part of that is building others to do that. And so we can use a little bit of help with that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I had established myself early on as indispensable to the team. And then I was like, but I want to go on vacation. You exactly. Know? <laughs> and then you va you're on vacation, but you're worried. Right. Because you don't know if the people you've left in charge, if they're ready, if they're capable, if they can do this. But it was your responsibility as a leader to groom such a person <laughs> or so a few people. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, uh, definitely a few people. And I think, you know, the, and that's another thing going back to, to my unit is that they would put one person in charge and then that person, you know, felt the full scope of that. And it wasn't really acceptable for her to mm -hmm. kind of delegate things to other people, but there was no pathway for her to move on either. Either, you know, it was just like, you're going to be here for the rest of your life and this is what you're going to do. There was no ascension model. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so how do you think uh, the leadership role helps to prevent burnout in staff nurses on the unit? So chaos. If you look at your typical nursing unit, it's, it's all over. The, it's, it's putting out fires. That leader has a lot to do with the culture of the unit. So if your culture is a put out fire culture, that's what your nurses are going to be doing each day that they come to work. So you set that tone. How you help to prevent burnout in your nursing themselves is helping your nurses prioritize, helping your nurses understand the most important thing for the day. We have a thing, um, a couple of hospitals where I've worked, they have a thing called the most important thing of the day for the patient. But what is the most important thing today? Are your nurses aware of the why and the what? And how do you ensure that your environment, the culture, is um, accommodating that so that your nurses are not scrambling? Um, you're, you're, as a leader, you, you modify your unit spiritually, physically, in every way to ensure that the nurses aren't burnt out. Um, I've seen a change in, in a unit where I was the manager with burnout where the nurses were scrambling for supplies and running to get this and running to get that. That's a huge part of a nurse's day. So I changed that. I changed how they access their supplies. I, I changed them running to get supplies to having supplies delivered to them. So they're not going all over the place. And if you look at it, nurses very rarely complain about the things they have to do as a nurse. It's the extra things that, we have them do that makes them get so frazzled. So I partner with my ancillary teams and, and work out what we can do to make the load lighter for nurses. And so again, that falls back on the leader, but 
are, are we trained? Are we developed? Do we know that we can do things outside the box? That's going to trickle down because everything, every button you push impacts the nurses one way or the other. And that is so true. And I, I know, um, and especially the solution to every problem tends to be uh, the nurses will be the solution. So uh, we had an episode where they wanted the heparin drips to be on some kind of um, schedule or, or uh, protocol and the nurses will take care of it. Or, you know, internal medicine team will say, well, this is um, XYZ and, and the nurses will, will uh, institute this program or the nurses will do the mm -hmm. research will do this and that it's just like oh my god like leave the nurses alone exactly <laughs> and it does and every like epic update that you have or computer software <laughs> and and more documentation and everything that just keeps coming down the line um but i you know i want to go back to something you said about uh the the leadership and uh you know i would say that the culture of the unit could probably be uh, you can look at that as a mirror of your leadership style. Uh, yes. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. And so that that is that falls under the 360 model of you, the leader. Who are you as a person? And is this too much for you? Or are there things within you that you need to develop that's going to also help you in your professional life so if you're a leader that don't have boundaries that don't respect time that that don't hold people accountable again all of that energy that your your team's feeling that and they're knowing that and you you have a blended team as leaders we all have blended teams we have strong people engaged people who want to be there who want to do great things we have our middle people and we have our are not so great performers. But when you, when you think about your engaged people, people who are about the business and want to see that unit grow and do well, they are looking at you, the leader, to see, oh, is, is my manager going to do something about that? Is she going to set some boundaries around that? Is she going to hold this person accountable or is she gonna let it slide again? So again, it's, it's, it's you. And that's what's missing in a lot of nurse leaders' leadership style, you. And are you fit as a person to do this? Those are some good questions. Um, so <laughs> talking about this 360 nurse, so, so if this is a, your business, right? This yes. is a consulting business. Um, yes. How did you come up with this idea and how did it get started? So the idea is because it, it came from being tired of that one-sided view. I have to be the nurse to meet these goals. But there were other views that nurse leaders need to look at. Again, they need to look at the personal development component. They need to look at the business development component. And then you also have to be a nurse. There it is all the way around. You need to see all the angles to be a great leader. Um, so I decided I, I have to do this. Why not? Why not me? I've lived it. I've seen it. And I continue to see it. And as they say, be the change you want to see, right? <laughs> so I decided I know what models are evidence-based and what models that I've used myself to avoid burnout and to be that, that leader that my team respected and that delivered results. So how can I share that with other nurse leaders and help them to cross over into this? Because again, if you ask many people, would you like to be the manager? No, they run far away from this position. How can we make this position more attractive? How can we prepare nurses to do it the right way and not run away from the position? Because it is still my heart nursing. And, and I still feel like we are, one of the greatest contributors to society and I and we need leaders we need great leaders we need prepared leaders and so I decided to take up that baton and and run with it oh well, you, we definitely thank you for that because you said <laughs> that I've ever heard who's considering making the nurse manager position more attractive to nurses. I yeah. mean, so important. That role is so important. It's so important. And, and I tell you, I have so many leaders, so many nurses that I see great leadership potential in, and I'll say, hey, 
let, I want to put you on my succession plan and, and help you. Oh no, I, I'm not interested. I want to see my family. And, and I'm like, see, that's, that's not it. <laughs> you know, I want to change that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is that. That's great. So do you have a system with 360 degree? I mean, how do you? Approach? Yes, I, I have a framework that I use. Um, I have a framework that I use and I have tools that I use to help me and help nurses actually get best, the best results that they can get, get the most out of their days. Um, broken down into 25% of your time should be spent on this, 25 spent on that and so on and, and so forth. And, and those are the three key areas that we discussed earlier. How much time are you spending on your quality metrics, your customer satisfaction, and your employee engagement, because I, it's folly to leave out the employees, because that's your team, that's your business. So we find that we're busy about the insignificant or the putting out of the fires. But I have a program structured to, this is how you should be spending your time, and these are the tools you should be using. This is what you need to be auditing, validating, to ensure that you're going to get the results that you need. Because what do we know about a system? A system helps you to get things done the right way over and over. And it also helps you to discover opportunities. But if we do it this way this month and that way next month and hope the third month, we're, we're spinning our wheels. Um, so is this program something like if I am working as a nurse and I want to aspire to the nurse manager program, is this something that I could do or do you just work yes. with? Okay. No, this is for aspiring nurse leaders and uh, current nurse leaders. Um, one, one nurse leader that actually went through my program, this was, a, she was newly appointed assistant director of nursing and she had held leadership roles before, but this one um, was in the director position. And so she went through the program and said to me, oh my God, where were you years ago? <laughs> because I felt so over the place, all over the place before. Now I know when I come into work each day, what I'm doing that day and what my focus is on that day. And while I do understand that there will be things that pop up during the day that may require my attention, I still have a focus point to go back to. And so with the program, she's now able to plan all of her monthly metrics and know how to follow a schedule of getting things done rather than wait till the 29th. You're saying, Oh my goodness, I, I need to finish the audit for this. Oh my gosh, I forgot that I need to. And that's typically how we function as nursing <laughs> leaders. Oh my goodness. I forgot. I have to turn this in by the fifth and, and we don't, there's a better way. Yeah. And then you drop everything and you don't, and then you drop everything. everything. <laughs> Correct. And then you're, you're there till 8 PM. Right, right. And then when the nurses come knocking on the, no, 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 I can't deal with you right now. <laughs> oh, so see, you know it, Katie. Yeah. You've lived it, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, now where have you been in my life, Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, because I, I mean, this goes beyond nurse managers. I'd said you, you do nurse executives as well? Yes, if the program is designed for anyone in nursing leadership because I, I, I've had some CNOs that could, could use the structure. Because again, we have big priorities. The stakes are high. And if we don't have a focus point each day, we could get caught up in the noise. The, our days as leaders are noisy days. And if, if there's not a focus, if there's not a, a mindset. So that's one of the things that I think separates um, 360 from a lot of leadership development program it has a huge mindset piece so if you're you know how they say get your mind right <laughs> if your mind is not in the right place you are going to be all over the place so i i think this is what we need as nursing leaders we've been doing it the other way for far too long and it hasn't worked or i'll say we have nurse leaders who are successful successful in that each month they meet their metrics Things are, are right. We don't have bad outcomes, but we're exhausted. Mm -hmm. We're exhausted and we miss that family vacation and 
and we missed that soccer game or we missed that recital because we were at the job making sure that we're getting all of it done guess what by ourselves and not using our team to the maximum of ability we're not leveraging the power of our teams and again that's because we're not we're not trained business owners we're trained nurses and what right. do we do as nurses we do it ourselves. That's kind of like a, um, you know, when you see one person doing it well, that becomes kind of like the model of excellence or something. Exactly. But they don't tell you that, you know, she doesn't have a life and, you know, she's exhausted right. under her eyes. But, um, you know, that one model of existence compared to, you know, the 99% of people that are just barely swimming or, you know, Correct. Failing, you know, that, Correct. that's an anomaly. That's, there's always going to be one person that does it okay. And so, and that's what I tell my clients. I swam for years. <laughs> I, listen, I was an Olympic swimmer for years in, as far as nursing leadership is concerned. I, I, I scrambled to meet deadlines and all that. And then when I learned how to be a business owner, it all changed. It all changed. My focus changed. The whole mental model changed. And, and I was able to to enjoy it actually, to enjoy being in leadership. And so now, you know, when people say, oh, I, I want to be a nurse, I'm, I'm going back for a nurse practitioner. I'm going, I am not interested at all. I, I desperately want to stay in leadership and, and continue to help others get to that place. Yeah, and I think it's another thing in nursing as well. And, you know, in a lot of these podcast interviews that I've done, I, I've talked to people that are doing mindset or self-help and, and, and all that kind of stuff, which is great, you know, because I see the nurses burned out. But as nurses, I think we are very resistant to asking for help. And if we ask Correct. for help, there's something wrong with us, like we somehow right. we're, we're flawed. <laughs> um, so you find that, that same problem in leadership. And, and, and so it's, it's really care of the caregivers. We, we, we are the caregivers and we are the answer. If you look at it as nurses, we, we provide the answers, we fix it. So how is it that we could need fixing? And so that's, that's again, the mindset change that need to occur. And even in our leadership roles, we do it. If we find that we need information in, in an area, We'll go scrambling to find it. We'll take a class. We'll, we'll um, attend a conference. We'll try to, to do that a la carte version of things and piece by piece try to get it together where this leadership business is big and, and we need it in a structured, systematic way. At least at the beginning of your leadership career, it needs to be the foundation. And so... You're, you're starting off on the right foot. And if you have to use the a la carte model afterwards, then that's fine, but at least you have a foundation. Yeah, that, that's really important. Do you find resistance from hospital organizations to you helping their nurse leaders or, is, or have you been more kind of like embraced? I haven't met resistance yet. <laughs> and I say yet because anything um, is possible. Um, what I've found is a lot of, facilities have a leadership development program of some sort, but it, it definitely is not structured and it, it doesn't have a, a flow. And so that's where they need my help to help them make it bigger than what it is. Or for the ones that don't have a program, they truly love, love the program and are thankful because it is helping their nurses. But what I'm finding though, is the majority of my customers tend to be the nurse leader themselves, <laughs> the nurse leader themselves. So, and then they say, well, how am I going to pay for this? I said, listen, everyone, ha well, for the most part, organizations have that tuition reimbursement or for, for nurses who are not going back to school, they're not seeking that master's or another degree. This is your educational development. This is your development. So tap into those funds. If you're, organization offer tuition reimbursement and some outright just pay so that tells me something it tells me that nurse leaders are looking for a solution they want a structured i almost say a template to follow because they are scrambling and there is a lot of noise in the industry about nurse burnout nurse burnout you hear it everywhere 
what I don't see a lot from organizations is what, what intentional efforts are you putting in place to ensure that it doesn't meet them? And again, many of them do great stuff for the frontline nurse, which is necessary. But I want to tell you that the nurse managers are the bunch that sit in the middle that gets overlooked. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how do you, how are you marketing uh, this business to reach these nurse managers and uh, different hospital systems? I use social media a lot. I do footwork. I, I show up at facilities. <laughs> um, you just show up. Yeah, I'm here. I do. I do, <laughs> I do regular, I do regular snail mail of, of my literature. Um, I'm actually even on the tail end of completing my book. So oh, what's your book? Yes. I am at the end of, of that. Um, should be, it's scheduled to be out um, by October. And that is going to contain strategies to develop your nurse leader program. It's, it's, it's got a lot of information in there about, it's for nurse, nurse leaders themselves. It's, it's aspiring nurse leaders, organizations, um, long-term care, hospital, anyone that um, use nurse leaders the, the book is for them. And it has the reason I put on there that nurse leaders should read it. I want them to be in a place to know what to ask for when they get offered a nurse manager position. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. You need to know what to ask for. <laughs> yeah, I know people are like, should I ask for more money? I'm like, forget the money. Like <laughs> forget the money. You need to ask for development and you need to make sure that your development contains this. It has that, it has that. And it follows me for this length of time throughout my journey. Because if you want me as a leader, if you're hiring me into this role to be successful, please help to prepare me. All right, yeah, that's for a coach. Forget the extra dollar. Uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So um, this is why we do here coaching and consulting because we do um, stay with the, some nurse leaders just a little longer because they're, they're like, wait a minute up. So, you know, and they have questions and, and, and I find that I would often say to them, remember your senior leader, your, your C CNO or your director is your upline and you should go to them for, they, I'm, I'm not finding that a lot of nurse managers like to do that. And again, that could be the piece where I don't want to show, like, I don't know what I'm doing. So they don't want to go to their senior leaders. And so they come back to me. <laughs> and so that's, that's how the coaching piece came about because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, wait a minute, they're still calling me. They're still wanting my guidance. So I, I need to open a coaching. <laughs> yeah, that piece is vital. I mean, how yeah. long is the program that you do? Well, it, believe it or not, it doesn't have an end date. The coaching, it's, it's as long as that nurse leader feels like, okay, I got this. And then, and then they're on their own. And, and again, they can do the a la carte version then too. If they just have one thing. Now I've seen where a manager has one thing she's dealing with. I had a manager, oof, she struggled with managing a diverse team. She just felt, I need more on diversity. I need more on how to deal with this employee. How to what if I'm not saying things that I'm saying the wrong things or, and so she held on to that piece for a while. And, and just with a little bit of coaching and, and coaxing, she's fine now. She's, she feels now that she's able to reach the other parts of her teams that she felt a little bit um, anxious about. Um, I, I just want to make sure I'm representing everyone well. And so now she does. Yeah, you know, I think that's a, the interesting piece of coaching, and I'm, I will make an analogy here in that um, sometimes it's really just about allowing yourself to kind of talk it out. And Correct. nurses, we do this with our patients. Like we might not be able to cure their cancer or cure their disease, but allowing the patient to just talk it out. Yeah, just, debrief, just talk. talk it, out. it helps. Yes. It really works, and it works for our patients, and it can work for us as well. You are right, Katie, because a lot of times they come to me for coaching 
I don't say much. And I hear a lot of, oh, I know what to do. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. And do you think that's the right direction I'm going? And I'm like, okay, let's talk about that direction. And they're the ones that still come up with, <laughs> with, with the things that they know they're supposed to do. But it's that ear. We pay for the ear. We do. Yeah, it's really important. Um, all right, Jordan, this is amazing. Well, tell me, what, what is the name of your book? Because I want to get it when it comes out. So I tell you this. I showed it to my, my friend and she fell out. It's called Sharpen the Axe. Oh, I like that. Uh huh. Um, and the first question she asked was, huh? What is that? And I said, well, I believe it was Abe Lincoln who said, if you, um, if you tell me to uh, cut down a tree, I'll spend four hours sharpening the ax and two hours sharp, uh, cutting down the tree. And why is that? Your tool. You need to have sharp tools. What's the biggest tool in healthcare right now? Your nursing leaders. And we're, we're not sharp at all. And that is not in any way speaking of intellect or any of that. It's we're not sharp enough for the job as, as nursing leaders. And so um, I, I have it. It's called Sharpen the Axe, Why Most Nurse Leaders Abandon the Role and Strategies to Stop It. So that sounds out for that. Yes. It's coming out in October. Yes. Promise. I promise. It's, it's, I know what these publishing and books, it's, it's, it took me it's, three years to publish me. my book. I know, I know. And I, I, I decided that I was going to offer um, the first chapter to anyone. Um, I could actually give you the link. Oh, that would be great. That signs up. And it's, it's the same. It's my website, 360degreenurse.com slash sharpen the axe. And so they could get a, an idea of, of what, what is to come with that book. Um, yeah, I, I decided that a couple of uh, nights ago that I need the nurse, see, and this is for the nurse managers especially. I need them to see, again, step back and look at what's going on in the industry. Take a look at the book and see if you fall under any of this. And then as the book comes out in October, see if you've received any of those development pieces along your journey. And if you've been a nurse manager for five years, 10 years, did you get any of that? And how many years have you spent spinning your wheels? That is, that's great. Um, and thank you so much for that link. I'm going to put that in the show notes so everybody can access it. I'm going to download it and I'm definitely getting the book when it comes out. Cause thank you, Katie. You know, even as entrepreneurs, you know, we still, it still translates to say, I still need a coach for myself, you know? Yes. Yes, um, that is, you are absolutely right. I, I still need a coach. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, you're too successful for a coach. You're always, no, no. where's the I, next level? I need that sounding board. I need someone to sometimes say, yes, Georgia, that is the right direction. And that is all. Right. So, <laughs> That's uh, very this has been great. All right. Well, thank you so much for this. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. We're, we're on a journey to help our nurse managers 